Personally, drag did not just change my life, it fixed my life. It's not that there's no future in the Philippines, but for me, I want to explore, and I believe that when I'm exploring, I will achieve something. That's what got me thinking about going abroad. Going abroad. I love him so much. I don't want to lose my grandson. Emigration is seen in our society as a way to escape what they call the hell of Iraq. But I and many other young people think this is wrong. Our energy would then go to another country. Why would that be good? One day, I will convince her to leave the country, to achieve what she dreams of. And she will acknowledge that I'm right. I see myself staying in this country, and they have to accept that. So we Gen Zs are really fighting for something. Our motivation is to earn something ourselves, to support ourselves. If he goes abroad, he might not have anyone there for him, and something could happen. That would take the life out of me. If that happens, I'll die. Heard this before? We choose where we want to live, but our families disagree. Young and old. Our realities and dreams can be so different. Seriously, it seems like there's a huge gap between the generations. Sometimes we just don't get each other. The question is, can we fix it? I was raised by my three grandmothers. First is my biological grandma. She is Aurora Pasawa, the mother of my dad. The second one naman is si Rosita Arenas. And then the third one is Early Arenas. For that As for the naman, third one, she's the youngest among the siblings. The final one is Mama, Mama Early. I call her Mama because when I was a child, I thought she was my mother. My dad died when I was nine years old. It happened suddenly. He was a diabetic, but had medicine to treat it. I don't know about my mom. I don't know much about what she's been through. She didn't know what to do, especially since she wasn't ready to be a single parent. We love Adrian so much. There is no kind of love that I would not give him. It's like she left him to us. My grandmothers explained me na that's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Nandito We're naman here. Kami. And there are three of us who can take care of you. Your three grandmothers are here. And then I finally felt and calm and comfortable. I have no idea how to ride a bike at all. I didn't own a bicycle as a child either, so I trained on the grass in Abu Nawaz gardens. I couldn't believe it when I suddenly saw a woman on a bicycle. I immediately ran to her because there are only a few women who ride bicycles, and I shouted, Captain, Captain! Captain, Captain! I was surprised that she knew I was a trainer. She said, because of your sports clothes. One day she came to the training to teach herself how to ride a bike. That was exciting. Captain Suad is my second mother. She's the mother who taught me to love cycling. 
My real mother is afraid of Captain Suad because she's very fixated on tradition and many little details. She's afraid of what Captain Suad might encourage us to do. I am an accountancy student. Every time I go to school, I have no idea what's going to happen. Then I had to stop due to financial crisis, due to the pandemic. When I stopped studying, that was also like a sigh of relief. You have to finish your studies. You don't want to embarrass your father's relatives and your cousins. I feel like I've disappointed my whole family. They're concerned because I wasn't able to study and they didn't know when I'd be able to study again. I still don't have any money. And Paul isn't the only one. Around a quarter of all Filipinos live below the poverty line. Although the economy in the Philippines after the corona slump is up and running again, there are still too few jobs for the ever-growing population. Millions of Filipinos, therefore, choose to work abroad. However, this isn't about achieving your dream, like Paul is thinking. It's about taking care of your family, because most Filipinos have no pension or social security. There are many opportunities overseas. So much can happen when you leave home. I'm looking forward to it. That's why my friends and I always talk about it. If I go abroad, who will be your best friend? Still you. Oh, no. I think... I think things for LGBTQ people are better abroad. Didn't you get the news that they're getting beat up out there? No, No, but sis, as far as the Philippines government goes, and all of the narrow-minded people here... Especially with the generational gap and everything. Yeah, that's still there. It is something that more, um, some Filipinos aren't ready to talk about. Na. LGBT aren't that fully accepted yet. We still like inclusivity. Yes, exactly. I've had more arguments with my mother and my family over where and what subject I chose to study than anything else. They expected me to study medicine like the other girls, but I find it boring. I enjoy making content for social media. I really enjoy working in this field, so I wanted to study something more along those lines. So I chose to study business, and from there I chose marketing, because it helps in regards to content creation. I currently work as a receptionist at the Babylon Hotel. Also, I'm a first-year student at the American University majoring in business. My family was totally against me working and also rejected many other things in my life. But in the end, there are things they just have to accept. I 
There are many taboos for women, for example, going out for fun or shopping. Except for when a woman goes out with her family, she's not allowed to go out. It's not allowed to meet with the opposite sex. They have to be veiled, for example. I totally reject all of that. I feel that Huda wants to make a radical change for women in our society. She wants to bring culture from outside of Iraq to Iraq. And she wants to be the reason for this radical change for Iraqi women. Like Suad, Huda's parents also tell her to leave the country, but just not in front of the camera. The situation for women in Iraq is a disaster. Many things are forbidden, and there isn't even a law against domestic violence. Things used to be different. In the 1960s, women were confident, well-educated, had good jobs. But living under Saddam Hussein's dictatorship and through many wars, radical conservative forces have been strengthened, which has worsened the situation for women. The funniest thing to me is how my family laughs at me riding my bike. And they ask, are you a boy now that you're riding a bike? Or they'll claim, you will ruin your femininity and so on. What I love about cycling is that feeling of freedom as I move forward. When I see birds spreading their wings, it makes me wish I had wings too. Why don't we humans have wings to fly with? I am afraid of how society looks at Huda. I'm also afraid of her being hit by a car, because many people don't obey traffic rules. I'm afraid of religious fanatics, who will forbid her to ride a bicycle for religious reasons. I'm afraid that she will be murdered or kidnapped, or anything that falls under human trafficking. I'm really afraid for Huda. A friend introduced me this live streaming app. They call Kumu as the Disneyland of social media. At first, I just watched it until I got my own ideas. Especially when I saw drag queens performing. Wow. What if? What if I try? The best thing about Kumu, because it's pandemic, my life is inside the house, especially inside the room. Kumu helped me deal with my fears so I wouldn't get paranoid. I suddenly didn't feel like I was alone during the pandemic. Personally, drag did not just change my life, it fixed my life. What is a revelation for Paul has a long tradition in the Philippines. 
More than a thousand years ago, there were already shamans who practiced gender crossing. When the Spaniards conquered the country in the 16th century, Catholicism came with them. And that was the end of it. Officially, anyway. And after that for centuries, gender crossing was no longer practiced so freely in public. Today, though, there are plenty of drag bars in Manila. More tolerated than loved. But drag shows are becoming more and more popular. What is this drag queen you're talking about? Is that drugs or something? What a shame, I told him. I wish he were a real girl. If he were a true lady, maybe he'd be very pretty. People might laugh at him. Sometimes they also ask, is your grandson still gay? No, I answer. He's working on becoming a man. I don't even want to hear all that is said about my grandson. What are you thinking for your life? It depends. If I live stream, I can save money and put it aside. So just in case, I can save that money for my studies. Take care of your studies. Because, you know, I can't help you. Mm, yeah, sure. I could also get more gigs arranged if I get discovered. You have to take care of me when I get older. So take care of yourself now. Study hard and then you can help your parents, your mother. It's not so much for me, but mostly for your mother. Pray that your dream will come true that you can finish your studies. They are pressuring me to finish my studies. That's the most important thing for them because they didn't have the chance to do it themselves. We have many dreams for him. We put a lot of pressure on him. We said, sign up. We'll support you, even if we don't have much. <laughs> These grandparents of ours, they think they know what's good for us. But of course, we reflect on that ourselves. And we know better what's good for us. He can be proud that he has an education, not like those types who just hang out on the streets. We've reached a place where our people have lost all hope and are full of fear and anxiety. Everyone started sending their children away for fear that they'll be killed here. 
We wanted to spread the spirit of hope and developed a special program to embrace young people like you, and also to develop an awareness of how to succeed in making Iraq attractive to people from elsewhere. Whenever I'm at work and I see foreigners coming to Iraq, I get bicycles for them and for me. And we go to Al Mutanabi Street and other places, the Martyrs Monument, for example. It doesn't matter whether you're female or male, because it's about your heart and mind. And abroad, we don't have to follow other traditions, nor do they have to follow ours. But we respect their system, and they respect ours. We learn from them, and they learn from us. Huda is quite the exception with her choice to stay in Iraq. In recent decades, millions of Iraqis have lost all hope and left the country, especially the well-educated, because of war, religious persecution, and the still ongoing terror by Islamist terrorists. The economy is a nightmare, and there is no improvement in sight. More than half of Iraqis are under 25, it's actually not surprising that today many young Iraqis want to leave the country. Hello. 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 To what extent do I feel responsible for what my family and also Captain Suad think? Deep down, I feel very responsible. I don't want to make them sad, hurt their feelings or break their hearts. I try to stick to what they tell me. In the end, there are many differences between us. If we disagree, I can only compromise for their sake. I think this generation is brave, even if they lack obedience to their elders and don't want to listen to their advice. But this generation is well informed. Technology allows them to experience what is going on around them. It is technology that is enabling this generation to be more cultured and informed. Because of that, they see our generation is backwards. I hope that she leaves Iraq and achieves what she desires elsewhere. Despite her courage, I worry about how society will react to her, a young woman in the prime of her life. She doesn't even know the negative sides of this society. Don't try to make me a copy of you or your generation. Imam Ali says, don't raise your children the way you were raised. It's not possible to make others a copy of you. As I accept you, you must accept me. What about my generation? We are more cultured. We're also more educated. Yeah, I appreciate that too, but times have changed. Your culture is completely wrong. What has changed? The morals and the ideas are the same, but what changed you is technology. Our ideas make more sense than yours, and you don't accept that. Here in Iraq, opportunities for women are very limited. True, but all their effort and energy would disappear and leave the country? How's that a good thing? Why shouldn't they remain in the country? Maybe we can find a way to evolve here and stay. When the engineer, the pilot and others are gone, who's left for the country? 
You know that I've been active in this field for a long time. I have tried to change society, and I've tried to make the bicycle a means of transport for women, but I didn't make it. We're still at the same point. Our society rejects this idea. I support Huda in some things, even if she wants to stay in this country, although I'm against it. I also share some of her thoughts on changing society. Even if the changes are small. Will I die? <laughs> well, then I die. Go ahead and die. <laughs> I love taking risks in life. If it looks dangerous, I'll try it. Let's go, yalla. I'm strong, come on, go. In 10 years, I'll either still be on Kumu doing drag. Or in 10 years, I must star. Like I said, there's a lot of options. I want to be in drag race. I want to go club to club to club, state to state to state, and perform. This is what I want. That's what I want for my future in drag. I'm going to take it there, and I believe I can do it. If he's abroad and can't take care of us, that's okay, as long as he visits us. I'm glad he wants to go abroad. He wants to be successful. He should be able to move forward in life himself. When that day comes, we won't let him regret it. I'm glad he is the way he is, not like the others. As long as someday he finds a wife. <laughs> I can't remember because I'm old. <laughs> Is that possible? Can I say that? I'm lost. Where do I start? <laughs> I have to go now. Okay, thank you. You're all crazy. 